know, the greatest story ever told is the Easter story. What it represents is our Lord and our Savior. Him being crucified, buried, and rising again. The cost and the price that was laid upon him. You know why Jesus? Why a death? Why such a horrible crucifixion? Why a resurrection? Why would there have to be this horrible death, burial, and resurrection? Why would God allow his own son to be beaten, to be tortured, to be nailed, to be hung, and left to die on a cross? The Bible says in John, that the book of John, that God even had to turn his own head away from his son Jesus. Jesus, as we hung there, he began to cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God turned away because he could not handle to see his own son suffer and bleeding, tortured. For no reason, he was innocent. God was innocent. But why such a price to be paid? Why such a celebrating celebration today across the world? Us here today celebrating this power, this resurrection. See, in the beginning in Genesis, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, God created male and female. God gave them life and breathed into mankind. Put them in their own garden and said, here you can live and multiply and produce. Here you will have control. You will live forever. God never planned that man would ever be separated from God. He created mankind for fellowship. He created you. He created me for a relationship, not religion, not ritual, not do's and don'ts, but a relationship with God in his own image, in his own likeness. Why Jesus? Why a death? Why a resurrection? Because see, in the garden, man, when God gave man his own will to choose, God said, I've laid out a plan for you. In this plan, you will have life and life evermore. You will live and you will subdue. You will multiply and reproduce and everything is going to be good. But yet man in the garden chose over one thing to not follow God's plan that was nothing but good, nothing but blessing, nothing but abundance, nothing but life. But yet man chose to do man's way. When man fell in the garden, mankind became separated from God. What God created, what God intended from the beginning was to have a relationship and to have fellowship. But now, because of the fall of man, man and God became separated. The Bible said sin through man entered into the world. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Why the cross? Why a resurrection? Why today? Why this celebration? Because, see, God needed man restored back to him. God never intended man to be separated, so God had to find a way home for mankind that man could return to God and man would not be separated. Man would not have to talk to God through a veil or through a sacrifice, but man would have an open door to God, an open relationship once again the way God intended it from the very beginning of time. Why God created you and created me in the beginning in the first place. Because God could not find a more acceptable sacrifice. God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that God gave his only son, Jesus. Not One of his sons, 
but his only, his first son, God gave him because God wanted to find a way for man to return home and that door to be open and never to be closed on mankind again that man could always return to God from the reason God created man from the very beginning of time that's why Jesus that's why a death that's why a cross that's why a resurrection that's why such a celebration today because Jesus came in John 16 in verse 33 he said in this world you're going to have trials tribulation there's going to be trouble there's going to be things you're going to go through stuff there's going to be discomfort there's going to be things that you're not going to understand. There's going to be distress. There's, there's going to be issues. There's going to be trouble. And it's going to be around you. But he said one powerful thing. But be of good cheer for I have already overcome it for you. He said I've deprived its power from ever harming or hurting you. See Jesus dying for you and dying for me. For the world. He came that not one would perish, but everybody have eternal life. Jesus died for all mankind. He was an acceptable sacrifice. John chapter 14 and verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If any man comes to the Father, he has to come through me. See, Jesus became that doorway. Jesus became that bridge. He became that mediator that restored God and mankind back into relationship that man could always return to God without ever being hindered, without ever being interrupted, without ever being held back, that mankind would always and forever be able to return to God. Be able to enter into this relationship with God no matter what goes on in life, no matter what we face because we all go through stuff. The Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. You and I are never going to be righteous in our own works and our own deeds, but it, it is only through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who makes all of us righteous in God's sight. The only way I have righteousness today, it is not because of my works, it's not because who I am, but it's because who Jesus is, and that's why the cross, and that's why the burial, and that's why a resurrection because he made a way, he opened a door that no man can ever close again. Your failures, my weaknesses, our discomforts, our disappointments, our setbacks will never separate us from God again. You and I have been restored. We have a right to return to God anytime and forever and ever and ever because Jesus lives, we live. Because he's raised, we are raised. You know, I thought about where Jesus said, I am the way. See, there's no other way. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to man. But at the end of that, there's always destruction, doom, and gloom. But he says that way is a wide way, and many travel that way because they're trying to find a way. The world is searching. People are searching for a way in life. And how do I make it? How am I going to get better? How is it going to be normal? How is things going to be good? How will I ever be better than I am today? Everybody in the world and you and me are always searching for a way. But Jesus comes on the scene and not only does he just say, I'm the way, but he laid his life down. And not only lay his life down, he allowed himself to be separated from his father. He was willing to go to that grave and he was willing to be allowed to be hung on the cross. The Bible says no man took his life, but Jesus willingly gave it and laid it down for you and me. See, he's the way, my friend. He is the way. He is not a way. He is the only way. Many people won't even attempt to try that way because they are afraid of their failure. They're afraid that of disappointments. They're afraid that they'll disappoint God. God will get mad at them. Friend, that's why the cross. That's why Jesus. That's why the resurrection. 
Because Jesus did it for you, my past, my present, and my future. He did it once and for all, and it is finished. It is complete, and he's opened a door between me and you and the Father that will never, ever, throughout eternity, ever be closed or shut on us again. He is the way. Secondly, he said, I'm also the truth. You know, in my life, I've lived around con artists. I lived around scammers. I was one. In and out of rehab, in and out of drugs, being raised in church, knew Jesus, had a relationship with him, grew up knowing him, knowing all about him, but yet, as many do, I chose another path, another way. I was deceived. I thought people around me were true. And I found out they were not true. They were just as crooked as I was. Just as evil, just as wrong as I was. But when I come to Jesus and I return back to him and I come back to him and I made that come back to him and give my life to him afresh and anew, one thing I found out with Jesus is he is not a truth out there. He is the truth. One thing I found out about Jesus is because myself, I like to just be around people that tell the truth. I don't care if you're telling me something I don't want to hear. Just tell me the truth. If you don't like me, tell me you don't like me. But don't say I like you and then lie about me. I just want to be around truth. I, I want to be around people that are truthful. I want to live in truth. I just want to see truth. How many here today just say, I'm better off just being around people that tell the truth. Just be real. Just tell the truth. It may be something we don't want to hear, but at least if you know it's truth, you can bank on it. You know what you need to work out. You know what you need to get through. If we just tell the truth, and what I found out about Jesus is he's not just a truth out there. He is the truth. And what he tells you he's going to do, friend, he's going to do. What he tells you he has already done, he has already done it. It is not a truth. It is the truth. And there's no other truth but Jesus. Not only is he the way and not only is the truth, but friend, he is the life. Jesus said, I didn't come to this world to condemn, to shun or to shame, but I came into this world to give you life and it more abundantly, better than I have it right now, better than I'll ever have it on my own. He didn't just come to make a way for me. He came to be truth to me, but he also came to give me life and eternal life. It is not temporary life. It's not just getting through life. It is an abundant life. It is filled with joy. It is filled with peace. It is filled with hope. It is filled with love. It's the life of God, that the Zoe of God that lives forever. See, when you return to God and you come back to God from the original plan and you give your heart to Jesus, he's the way. He becomes the absolute truth, the only truth. He's who you can bank on. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And he's also the life. He is the only life to have. I've said before, I don't know if my son Chaston, he's my only son, he's my first son. I don't know if I would have been able or could even today to give my own son for you, even for my family, even for my friends, especially not my enemies. I don't know if I could, but that's the awesomeness of God's love towards you and me that God gave his own son because one, God loves you. And it's not just love me when I'm doing good. It's love me when I'm doing wrong. It is loving me because God is love. God doesn't love. God is love. That's who he is. That's what he does. He's life. 
He's love. You know, it wasn't the nails that kept Jesus on that cross. Love kept him on that cross. It wasn't the nails that hung him on the cross. It was love that put him on that cross. It wasn't the body that was being pierced and torn that allowed him to suffer. It was God's love for you and me because he had to be an acceptable sacrifice that you and I could have this life, this abundant life, this life that lives forever. We're just pilgrims in this world. We're just passing through. We are the children of the Most High God. Our citizenship is in heaven and we will live forever. Would you stand and allow me to pray for you this morning?